Hi, I'm Tamara and today I am going to teach you how to sew ruffles. I have two different techniques that I will show you. One is a very quick and fast method and it will give you a bit of a ruffle like this one here. The second way that I will show you how to sew a ruffle will take a little bit more time but it will give you a bit more of a precise ruffle and that will give you a ruffle that looks something like this one here. So the reason why I needed to make a ruffle is because I wanted to add a ruffle to my puff quilt. If you are coming to this tutorial from the previous tutorial on how to sew a puff quilt, the second method of how to make a ruffle is probably the better option. But if you're in a hurry and you feel like just doing the first method, that works too. Either one will look great on this puff quilt. So let's jump into that tutorial. I have two pieces of fabric here that we will be using to show you how to make ruffles. Now the first way I'll show you is the fast way. I'll show you that one on this piece of fabric. This piece of fabric all I did was I hemmed the one edge and then I'll just ruffle on the other side and then you'll be able to attach this to any of the projects that you're doing. The second way that I'm going to show you will be the way that I did it for my puff quilt. So what I did was I took a piece of fabric, I folded it in half and I ironed it. So you've got your finished side on the one side and then we will add the stitches to the other side so that we will be able to do our ruffle that way. So the first way that I'm going to show you how to do ruffles is going to be the fast way. So we're gonna to go to our sewing machine and there's two settings that we need to adjust. The first setting will be our tension. All right, so I'm turning the knob all the way up to number nine. That's as high as my tension goes. Now the second thing that you need to do is go to your stitch length and make your stitch length as high or as long as it will go. Now for your thread, I'm using white thread so that you will be able to see what I'm doing. Now just pull on both of those pieces of thread so that they are a nice long length and then it's time to start sewing. This method only needs one line for sewing. So I'm going to mark it at a quarter of an inch and that's where I'll put my needle in. And then I'm not going to backstitch. To make your ruffle, remember, no backstitching. All right, so I'm gonna go slowly along this piece of fabric here at a quarter or an eighth of an inch, depending on your seam allowance for your project. And as I go, I don't know if you can see on the other side here, but the fabric is starting to gather all on its own. I'm just gonna go a little faster. All right, I'll stop there just to see how it's looking. And as you can see, it's starting to gather the fabric together all on its own which is why I say this is the nice, fast, and easy method to create your ruffle. So you'll go all the way to the end, and then when you get to the end, again, do not backstitch. Pull that needle up and out, and then pull your project away and give yourself some long thread again at the end. All right, so we've got our long thread on either end, and the reason why I say that you want some long thread on both ends is just in case when you are done your ruffle, so this is what it looks like so far, if you look at your ruffle and go, mm, I want it a little bit tighter, then all you have to do is take one of the threads, the top thread or the bottom thread, and you'll take that thread and you'll just be able to pull and tug and you'll be able to move your fabric down the line. Now, with one seam, the problem is going to be as you're pulling and tugging, the thread may break. If that thread breaks, you're out of luck, right? Like how are you going to fix this, let's say, right? So my second method is a bit more finicky, but I think it's worth it so that you don't have that headache of perhaps your thread will break. Now, if you want this one, of course, you saw it at the very beginning before I started to play around with it. It actually was a very nice ruffle. And if that's all you need, then that's all you need to do. You don't need to tug on it. You don't need to adjust it. That's perfect. But if you are going to want to play around with how tight or loose you want your ruffle to be, this next way is the way to go. So I am going to put my tension back to the normal setting. 
So for me, the normal setting is four. And now I am going to leave my stitch length at its longest stitch length. And this method, you are going to put one, two, three seams all in a row along each other. The reason why you might want to do three is again, if one of your thread breaks as you're busy gathering your fabric, you have more seams that you can still tug on and create that ruffle. All right, so let's put that in our machine. Make sure that you've got those long pieces of thread again. And I'm going to start at a quarter inch, no back stitching, and just go nice and slow all the way down. And as you can see, this method is not gathering up my fabric while I'm sewing. And that's helpful because when you need to do your second seam, you'll be able to do it nice and straight along that first seam that you just did. All right, so I've done that first seam, pull all the way out. You want a long piece of thread again at either end. And as you can see, it's not gathered up and that's good because we want to put a second seam right alongside the first seam, making sure that you are not crossing over on that first seam. Otherwise it'll knot up and then it won't work. I'm going to do this one at a quarter of an inch. Again, no back stitching. Actually, this is more like a half an inch and my first one was more like a quarter of an inch. I'm being honest on my measurements. All right, so pull that on out and give yourself a nice long tail as well. So now I've got two seams here, nice, neat, and together. And now we wanna do one more. Same thing, no back stitching. make sure you leave long tails. And then we will get to turning this into a nice ruffle. So you can always mark these seams with a fabric pencil as well because obviously my third seam is a lot further away from my first two. Okay, again, let's give ourselves a long tail. So now we have our three seams along our piece of fabric. And what we're going to do is we are going to take the top three pieces of thread and that's what I'm going to use to tug. So you're going to ignore these other three pieces, other three threads, I should say. So take your three threads and just start to pull and gather your fabric. And as of course you're pulling, you're putting tension on your thread, which is why it's nice to have more than two lines just in case. Now even I did a really long one for my puff quilt and so in a few spots my puff quilt ruffle actually broke all three threads. So I just went and I started where it broke and I did the same method and then I was able to pull that section together. I just did it with a different color of thread so that it was easy for me to find the new thread. So even if all of your threads break, there is a way to be able to fix it. Now, one thing that I did not mention about making ruffles is how much fabric you will need for your ruffles. So what I would suggest is measure out your project and then whatever that measurement is where the length of the ruffle that you need, take that measurement and times it by three. And that's how much fabric you will need for your project. So as you're gathering your fabric, the nice thing about the three seam lines is that it keeps this piece flat, which makes it easier to attach onto particular projects. And the next thing too, is you'll be able to work from one end, but if it gets a little too difficult from that end, you just start on the other end. And so you can kind of meet in the middle. All right, so of course, as I go along, I'm ending up with really long ends on either end, but that's okay. And this is my finished ruffle. And once you've gathered all of your fabric, you can add it to your project in two different ways. You could add it by lining this seam up 
along with your project piece of fabric and then sew along it. And if some of these seams end up showing on the part of the project that you are seeing, and you don't of course want to see these extra seam lines, it's totally fine. You can take your stitch ripper and you can take those seams out because you've already attached it to your project. The second way to do it, and the way that I did for my puff quilt, was I actually laid this piece of fabric past the edge of my fabric, and then I attached it to the outer edge of my fabric, but then I cut all of this excess off. I, I liked doing it that way, but uh, either way, it'll work. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. Please subscribe if you want more creative content, especially sewing tutorials for beginner sewers. Hit that like button if you liked this tutorial and hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next video. Happy sewing, bye.